again. And I'm getting something else out of it. I'm getting something else out of it from a conversation me and my son are having. So I like to play the Bible while I'm in the car. And we're listening to John chapter 11 again. I read it the other day, but I feel led again to read this morning. And of course, God starts showing me something else. Glory to God. The Bible says that Lazarus was in that tomb for four days, stinking. Stinking. Funky. And the Bible says that Jesus In two miles, keep right onto I-40 East toward I-73 North. The Bible says that Jesus went into the tomb. Jesus went into the tomb. And at first, I, this whole situation got started because I was asking myself, like, Lord, am I missing something? The only thing that Jesus said was, Lazarus, come out. He didn't, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh, he didn't do a whole lot of extra antics for Lazarus to come out. So I was asking God, like, Lord, do I, did you believe differently? Is that something that you believe that I don't? Because I want my faith to be like that. I want the results. I want my power of it to be like that. I want the authority like that that you have. And the Lord said, well, you have it. You have the authority. You have the dunamis power. <laughs> You got my spirit, then you got my power living on the inside of you. That's that's like, they, the two go hand in hand. You have to know that it's there in order for you to use it. Use the right four lanes to keep right, right onto I-40 oh east toward I-73 north. That's what it is. We have to know our authority in him. What good is it being full of the Holy Spirit and having the dunamis power, the power of the living God, on the inside of you keep but right not knowing how to utilize it or misusing it for 46 miles so continue anyway, straight i was saying after after that i was saying to god like lord the only thing that you did was say lazarus come out come out and you left it at that lazarus come out you didn't say a whole lot of stuff you didn't you know Reiterate 
point that this man was not living when he got up. He was not alive when he got up. Jesus. Glory to the living king. Lord, you are so worthy to be praised. Ain't nobody like you, Lord Jesus. Nobody is like the Lord. Who is like the Lord? Nobody. Ain't no. Glory to the risen king. This man was dead before he got up. The scripture is very specific to say, and the dead man got up with his face and grave clothes on and wrapped up. And the next thing Jesus says after he tells him to get up is he tells the people to take those grave clothes off. Now, some people still have on grave clothes. God has rescued them from bondage. He done took them up out of Egypt. He done revived them. He sent a revival fire. But the grave clothes still on, the mentality is still on them, wrapped around their minds like those, those, that stuff was wrapped around Lazarus. Some of that old, that old stinking thinking is still on some, some of y'all. Glory to God. And some of y'all got to come up and God has brought you up out of and delivered you from the situation, but you still have the grave clothes on. Both things were required during this resurrection. This resurrection didn't end that Lazarus getting up out of that tomb. The end of it was he had to take off the grave clothes that identified with death. The grave clothes was because the man was dead. When God woke him up, he said, take off those old garments. Take that off of him. He's not dead anymore. And some of y'all have to take off the old mentality that God is trying to bring you up out of. He's delivered you. You've prayed and you've gotten deliverance. You sought God. He delivered you, but you still have the baggage. You still have the bags. Some of you have not. Oh my God. God has delivered you from holding grudges. God has delivered you from envy and wrath and bitterness, but you still have the grave clothes on. Yes, God has rebuked the spirit, but you might still have the mentality or the same um, interactions with people or the same people around you or, you know, things like that. Whatever it is, ask Holy Spirit for exactly what it is concerning you specifically. And then God gave me something else about this scripture. When Mary got up, when Mary got up off that floor, the Bible says that when Martha came and told Mary that the teacher, Jesus, was looking for her and asking for her, they didn't have no dialogue. Mary didn't ask her, well, where is he? Well, what is this? Or what is this? She got up off that floor. The Bible says she got up and she got up quickly. And, because, and then the scripture says because she got up so fast, the Jews wanted to know why she was moving so fast, so they followed her. Now, I have been talking about this whole time, and I have been burdened with, Lord, I want to fit in. I want to be like everybody else. I don't want to stand out all the time. I want people to accept me for who I am. I want people to accept me for who I am. I want people to accept me for being a teacher of the gospel. I want people to accept me for being a prophet of God. People will not accept you period when God has called and chosen you called you out which means you're not like them and when you're not like people you stand out and I've told my son this haven't I Lance I've told my son this I've told him like you're not like everybody else so you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb and sometimes when you stick out like a sore thumb thumb to wicked people and you're a light in darkness you have to be strong and you have to know who you are and you have to know who God is inside you and I was talking to God about this situation with Mary and how she got up and how the Jews followed her 
the Jews were Pharisees and Sadducees from Jerusalem. They were the same ones who had been persecuting, persecuting Christ through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and John. And now here they are in John chapter 11. And they they not following Jesus per se, but they follow Mary because she got up. Because God called, Jesus was looking for her and called her name. People will follow you. People will follow me because of how I obey God. They don't know what. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They don't know why they're following me. They don't know what, why they, why, why they're intrigued by me. Speed check I'm, reported or ahead. What I'm doing or what I'm saying. They don't know why. But it's because of the light that shines in me in darkness. It's because of the light that shines in you in darkness. And I, and I have to repent to God about complaining all the time lord i just want to be understood i just want to fit in with everybody else i want to go i want them to invite me lord and god is like no they're not going to invite you because you don't belong in those those places and if i do allow you to go to some of those places and allow you to be invited to some of those things you go and be my hands and feet and mouthpiece in the name of jesus you go and be the light in darkness in the name of jesus So please be encouraged today. This encouraged my heart to see that Mary got up. And when she got up, she got up quickly. She didn't waste no time. She didn't ask a whole lot of questions. When Jesus was looking for her and asking for her and calling her, she got up. The first thing, and just like Lazarus, he got up. The first thing we have to do is have a desire to leave the place that we're at. That old mentality, that old neighborhood, that old church, glory to God, that old relationship, glory to God. We have to decide that we have to get up from that old place. If God is calling you and said, come up here, come up higher. I got something I want to show you. I got something I want to tell you. I got something I want to teach you. But you're still down there wallowing in that same relationship, in that same neighborhood, in that same house, where them same demons meet you every day at 6 o'clock. Glory to God. That same church, that same dead church, glory to God. And you'll know if the Holy Spirit is talking to you. I know some of you are probably going to be uncomfortable and annoyed by this message because the Holy Ghost is talking to you directly and dealing with you directly. And to God be all the glory for what he is revealing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't know nothing. I know nothing about God unless he reveals it to me. I know nothing about his word unless he reveals it to me, unless he shows it to me. I'm not that intelligent. I am his servant only. And what he says is right and true. And he's going to deliver whoever he wants to. But he want to deliver some people out of some old bondages and some old mentalities and mindsets. And he wants to tell us, first of all, get up. And in Mary's case, she got up quickly. And when she got up fast, people started looking at like, why is she getting up so fast? Let me follow her wherever she's going. But she been in here morning the whole time and now Jesus called her, she done got up from there and she got up fast. Let me follow her where she's going. They, she, they followed her right to Jesus. People gonna follow me right to Jesus. They don't know why, why they so, like why is she so, where's she going so fast? Why she doing that? Why she going up, why she? They gonna follow me right to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They're going to follow you right to Jesus. And in Lazarus' case, he got up at the command of Jesus. And he had to take the grave clothes off in order for him to live again. It wasn't just about the resurrection. He now needed new garments to wear. And you need new garments to wear in your new life. You cannot have the old things. Don't go back to that old relationship. It's calling you, sis. That old relationship is calling you. That old man is calling you from however long ago. 
it's really Satan. It's not really him. It's Babylon. Babylon can be dis disguised as a blessing too. But that old thing calling you back, sis, let it go. Let him go. Let him go on. Let her go, bruh. Let her go on in the name of Jesus. And you keep the peace of God on your right and on your left. And like I said, Babylon can be disguised as a blessing too. Satan can make exactly what you've been praying for and asking God for look like it's from the Lord. But God will only do things in his timing. And sometimes we, we walk out of sync and out of step with the Holy Spirit because we're so ready to get that thing we've been asking for. We're so ready for God to answer the prayer. And we, we will cling on to whatever looks like it's from God. That's why it's important to be led by his Holy Spirit. Because sometimes it's not from God. Sometimes it's Babylon disguised as God. Babylon is in direct opposition of God. It's the world. It's worldliness. It's, it's the enemy. It's Satan. That's what Babylon is. And sometimes we'll receive and accept Babylon because we're so ready to be out of that wilderness season. We're so ready. Lord, may I not be so ready to get out of the wilderness season that I'll accept anything from Satan in the name of Jesus. And may that be your prayer too. That God prepares us for what he has prepared for us. That way when you receive it, it's in God's timing. He's going to bless it and he's going to prosper it and he's going to do it quickly. That's his word. I don't remember the scripture, but he says, um, and I will do this and I'm going to do it quickly. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. I might have to tag those scriptures at the bottom. Um, of the screen but to God be all the glory just pray about this video if it's for you I had no intent on um, coming getting on here today I promise you but I'm, I can't help it whenever the word has the Lord has given me the gift of the word of knowledge which means whenever I read the word of God he reveals exactly what he meant by what he originally said and he opens it up to me and I thank God for his gifts. May, may he help me steward everyone that he's given me in the name of Jesus. That's my, my prayer. I don't want to waste nothing God has given me, given me. Even where God is taking me in my life right now at this season in my life. The things that God has, has put inside me before the foundation of the world. Before I was ever even born. He gave me all these gifts and talents. And he's allowing me now to utilize every single one of them. So, you guys pray my strength in the Lord. That God would strengthen me for the task and assignments and the mantle and the purpose that he has called me to. And I just pray right now, Lord, that every person watching now or years from now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, even if people are watching this video years from now after the rapture, and after we done got up out of here, your remnant, and they're watching this video, Lord, I just pray that you impress something on their hearts, Father. If you have chosen them to know you, if you have called them to know you and come into the full knowledge of Jesus Christ, Lord, I just pray that you would impress something on their heart that would minister to their spirit and bear witness with your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless the people, Lord. Cover them. Help them to come out of situations, Lord, that you don't want them in. Help them to come out of circumstances, Lord, where they have been bound. Father, I just ask that you break every chain. I ask that you uproot, tear down every demonic seed that's been sown in the lives of your people. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see you in the name of Jesus. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, so that we can see you. Open the eyes of our hearts and our understanding in our hearts. Because this is what you want. You want our hearts. The things don't matter to you. We can't take none of that to heaven with us. Our hearts is what you see. It's attached to our soul. So, Lord, I just ask that you take, remove the scales from the eyes of the heart of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, have a beautifully blessed day on purpose.